Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Rich Perez welcoming you back into another dose of the rundown. We got a special guest with us today, two-time Division I All-American for the Hofstra Pride, Mr. Charles Griffin. Pride wrestler Charles Griffin, number two of the nation at 141 against Freedom. Was talking to him, medical red shirt. Wow, beautiful technique. Charles Griffin, return to the mat technique. You don't see that very often. He, and now this is his move, the cross wrist roll. It's over, Griffin is dominating. And we got the back points for the first move and more right there. And Nathan Morgan knows it. What a great flurry of action. In all, five back points for Griffin and the riding time ends up being a 9-4 victory for the Hofstra wrestler. What a flurry. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Long time no see. It's been a it's it's been a while. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm just living, um, and you know that's about all I can do. <laughs> that's good. It's great to hear. It's great to hear. Well, Charlie, I've been I've been watching you wrestle since you commit. You your first season at Hofstra was what 2004, 2003, 04? Uh, five, I think. Yes, five, 2005. Okay. Okay. So you were, you were coming in around the time John Moss was probably, that was his junior year. I want to say. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You were, you were one of those recruits coming out of PA Pence for the, for those who don't know, Pennsylvania is the cream of the crop of high school wrestling here in the United States. So that's got, that's gotta be a way of life. I imagine coming up. What was, uh, what was your introduction to wrestling? Um, see, that's a little different story for me than most, I think. Um, I actually started wrestling in eighth grade. Um, my brother started and uh, I didn't, I didn't join the year that he did. Uh, and um, I watched, I sat and watched a whole season of him doing it. And it was just, uh, it was, it was hard to watch because I knew I loved it right away. Um, and I couldn't wait for the next season to come because I was going to I knew I was going to join. So I actually, you know, sort of got revved up before I joined wrestling. Um, and I learned a little bit of stuff the year before I started with my brother and stuff. So when I started, I I had a, I feel like I had a, a, a heads up already and I was already a, an athletic person. I played football, baseball, um, loved I, I, I wanted to go to the NFL. Um, I love football, but um, then in ninth grade, you know, I just didn't really have the size and I knew I wasn't going to. So that's when I focused on wrestling. So I started in eighth grade, but I, I had a strong focus. Um, probably ninth grade. That's when I like just realized this is what I have to do um, to, because of my body type, you know, I'm, only five five, so I wasn't gonna get into the NFL. Um, so I, I just strapped on the wrestling shoes, and that's what I did. Right, right. We you mentioned you mentioned coming in a little late. Obviously, the one thing that sticks out um, for me when when you're talking about that is is size, which I know is is a is, is a factor for a lot of guys. I know your former your former college coach Tom Ryan. That was actually one of one of the things that kind of made him want to get into wrestling. What were, what were um, some, some other things that kind of intrigued you? Like you, you said you, you loved it right away. So what, what were the, the other things about it that intrigued you about wanting to become a wrestler? Um, it, that's a difficult question. Um, I just, I just loved it. I just love the, the effort that you have to give. Um, and you know, the letdowns, I, I seen my brother, you know, I seen him losing matches and stuff. And it was like, you know, he's, he's a pretty hard worker, you know, from the, from the start, him and I grew up, we were always, you know, wrestling around and, you know, fighting and stuff. So we, we were tough kids. So, and I'm, I'm what was watching him and, you know, just, just that, that battle that you have to go through, I could see him, I could see it in it, it in his face, you know, and um, I think maybe that that might have intrigued me a little more, you know, knowing that, you know, you're not out, just out there wrestling an opponent. You're you're going you're battling against yourself also. 
Um, and I don't know if um, I think many people realize that pretty pr pretty early on. And uh, some people don't like it, can't handle it, and then other people strive, you know. And and that's one of the things I think I did a lot is um, on a lot of my conditioning stuff. You know, I was trying to beat myself. So I think, yeah, I might have seen that and that might have intrigued me uh, to want to wrestle a little more also. Right on, right on. Well, you're a guy that, that definitely had his fair share of accomplishments Co coming in so late. Was, was it a was it a little bit of a struggle for you as far as far as, you know, catching up to speed and, you know, like as far as the, the success coming? Did you kind of kind of get some success early on? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was. I was decently successful early on, but I just, uh, I struggled in, in a lot of areas and I basically uh, kept myself in the, in the positions I was good at. Um, and I basically won matches on spin behinds and that's all I did. Uh, so it took me, it took me uh, like two years before I could like take a good shot and feel comfortable shooting on people um so i did struggle uh i did struggle and with that i i won a lot of matches and a lot of um uh, um of my competition with with the scramble because um that's kind of how i learned how to wrestle just you know I, I wasn't comfortable shooting so a lot of times people were shooting on me so i was scrambling you know trying not to give I was stingy, even as a, you know, as a green wrestler, I was still stingy. I didn't like to get taken down. I didn't like to get scored on. Um, so I fought and that was something that I had right away. But the technique took time. I mean, I, I didn't even know how to drill till I got to college. Wow. Um, that's when I learned how to drill and, and, and develop a good high crotch and, you know, but I mean, I, I don't want to say that I didn't have good technique in high school. I did. Um, but I think I was just more of a gritty wrestler um, in my younger years. Right, right. Well, we met, we mentioned how, how, you, how you're coming out of PA and, you know, how successful Pennsylvania is with high school wrestling and everything like that. I know you have a you, you actually have a relationship with the Acardinos, Jerry and Justin. Um, you know, what, what were some of, some of the, uh, the guys that you were able to get around while you were in high school that, that helped you bring along that success? Uh, well, actually, um, Acredino, he moved at a young age up to Wilkes-Barre, where um, Ravelli, grew, where Ravelli's from. So I, I would see them around at tournaments and stuff, but I didn't get a lot of interaction with them until they came to Hofstra. Um, and then it was like, I knew them my whole life, <laughs> you know, and they're those type of people where they just, you know, they take to you right away. Um, they're really nice people. Um, so it feels like I've known them forever, but uh, actually in the younger years, my younger years, I didn't know them all that much. I knew of them. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, and then what else was the who who were who were just some some of the some of the people that you were getting around during your your high school time that were helping you out with your success or, or getting to that next level? Okay, yeah. So um, there's a coach uh, besides my coach. My high school coach is an unbelievable coach. He you know he has to deal with a lot um, in the Reading area. The you know it's a uh, there's a lot of poverty. And, um, you know, so he has to deal with a lot. And uh, he, so he's just an amazing guy. He's very patient and he can explain things very well. Um, so he, he was always there and uh, he could work with me even though I'm, you know, lightheaded. And, um, and then I had another coach. Um, we had a, a club here, Steel Mac Club. And uh, 10th grade, yeah, 10th grade, I started, I started going to the Steel Mat Club, and it was just like the best guys in this area, and we would all get together and bang heads, and the, uh, the coach who, uh, Chris Balanca, he's the coach down at, at uh, he's at Alvernia right now. Um, he was at Kutztown for a while, um, 
but he uh, he he kind of brought us all up and exposed us to a lot of wrestling um, throughout Virginia, Jersey, all throughout Pennsylvania. And uh, he would take us to the Disney duels. And we were just he just exposed us to some really good competition. Um, and he and he gave us a lot of the confidence that we needed um, to go to the next level. Uh, he basically forced, not forced me to go to college, but he, he was right there holding my hand the whole way, helped me through the process. Uh, and um, so he, he was like a big brother, a big brother. So yeah, he would be a big influence on my wrestling after um, and during high school, but definitely after, uh, cause I didn't plan on going to college necessarily until I won States and, and, and realized that I can t continue wrestling. And that's what drove me to go, um, to school after high school. I actually had a question for you about that. I wanted, I wanted to save it though. Cause I, I, th I think I'll ask you it after, after I ask you uh, this next one. So you, were a, a state runner up in 2000. Wait, hold on. Let me get this right. High school national champion as a senior, state runner up as a senior. 2004, you were an All American and won a state championship, right? Mm -hmm. at, at that time, was like, how, how were things really like click clicking for you? Did, was it like at this time where you, did you always feel like you were? I, I kind of asked a lot, a couple of people this, like, when did you really feel like you were, you were a wrestler? Cause like some people re wrestle and they're just wrestling and other people are really wrestlers. So like, was it at that point that you really felt like you were a wrestler? Um, yeah. Uh, when I went, I guess uh, in my 11th grade year, I, w I went into States. I didn't think that I was going to place, uh, I don't remember what I was seated, probably like 11th or something. Didn't think I'd really, I mean, I, I don't know why I didn't have the confidence in myself, but I just, I was very surprised the year that I won States. I didn't even think I was going to be in the top eight. Um, but I found myself in the font, in the semis. And it's like, I knew I was going to the finals. And I think that might have been the moment where things, you know, were like, like the lights turned on, like, hey, this is, this is, this is who you are. This is what you do. Um, this is, this is what you've been doing, you know, and it's for, it was years, you know, years I, I was working, you know, towards being a state champion. Uh, I was ninth grade. My goal was to become a state champion as a 11th grader and then 12th grader win nationals. And I, that's exactly what I did. Um, I didn't win states my senior year. And that was one of my goals. One of my goal, my goal was to win states as a junior, a senior, and then win nationals as a senior. Um, but, you know, I ended up losing to Coleman Scott my senior year in the finals of states but yes to get back to your question i'm sorry uh that's fine the my 11th grade year semifinals. that's when it clicked and i knew i was going to the finals and i was going to wrestle the kid that i lost to the week before that in the district finals and i knew i was going to beat him like it just it, it was just like known for some i just knew it right so, you know, now, now to get to this question, I wanted to ask you, I had heard that you were actually a late commitment to, to college your senior year. Is that, that's correct? Yes. And you, it's now, it's interesting to hear you say you, you weren't, um, you know, really sure if you even going to, going to head to college or, or wrestle in college. So, you know, that, that's already on the table already. Can you kind of expand on that and tell me like, what were the other reasons you were, you were a late commitment? especially with the, the accolades you had, I would think somebody with those accolades would, would definitely be getting some looks. Yeah. Um, I, I had some, I had some interviews with some people and, uh, well, I, I went to Votech and was going to, and was welding, you know, for three years. So I, I planned on just, you know, getting a welding job near home and, uh, 
and that was it. I was gonna, that was gonna be the rest of my life. Um, and then I won states, and it kind of changed, it changed things. And it was like, you know, there is more, there is more out there. And um, I want, I, when I saw that I had the opportunity, that's when I was, um, you know, I, I had both feet um, in the car. You know, I was gone. I was, I was riding that train. Uh, once I realized that I could possibly get to to uh, go to college and and continue to wrestle, um, so yeah, I guess that's uh, what what was your what was the question again? Just I just wanted you to kind of expand expand on, on you know like why what made you to be become like a, a late commitment instead of like an earlier on commitment? Yeah, yeah, and then uh, I didn't know necessarily where I wanted to go. My brother was going to Bloomsburg. Um, all my friends were at Bloomsburg, and it's close, close, close-ish to my house. So I was, I was thinking about just going there. Um, and then Tom Ryan, it's a funny story actually. I've told it, I've told it before, but he called me out of nowhere and he's like, "Hey, um, you're still coming, hops, right?" And I was like, "Uh," he's like, "Well." I have the letter in the mail. It'll be there tomorrow. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, and, and I remember thinking to myself, if that letter comes tomorrow, I'll sign it and I'll go. <laughs> and it was there. It was there the next day. I swear to God that the letter was there. And that's that was like, that was like the moment where there was no turning back from Hofstra, you know. Besides, I loved Tom and um, I, I don't know anyone who doesn't, you know, he's just, yeah. you want to be around the guy. I, I wanted to be around the guy. I was heartbroken when he, when he said he was leaving, but um, you know, I, I understand now that I'm older, you know, that's, you know, that's just the way things go and, you know, you got to live your life and, you know, he had to live his life. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was hurt when he left. Right, right. He's he's definitely a guy that, you know, I've, I've enjoyed being around myself. I remember I was actually working out with Lou Ruggiero. This is probably like my junior year of high school. And he's telling us a funny story because for a lot of people that don't know, like they just know that Lou wrestled for Tom Schiffler, but he was actually Tom Ryan's recruit. So he's telling us a, a story about, you know, he's walking into this restaurant and Tom Ryan just kind of walks in behind him with two bags in his hand. He was getting recruited by Buffalo as well. So on one bag, he's pulling out like snow boots and shovels and like heavy coats and things like that. And then the other, he's pulling out swim shorts and, you know, goggles and sunscreen and stuff like that. And looks at him and says, which would you prefer? Yeah. Um, do you have like any, any funny stories like that dealing with Tom? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of funny stories with Tom. Um, maybe not necessarily to that effect, uh, but yeah, there's some funny stories with Tom. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> we just got back from Oklahoma and, uh, it snowed and we came in from LaGuardia, took the bus to Hofstra. We got off and everybody's throwing snowballs. And, um, so I was leaning down by this car. And I started to run. And when I did, Tom Ryan, I didn't realize it was his car and he was in it. He opened the door just as I started to run. And I hit my right here. I split my head open on his car. Uh, <laughs> kind of messed up my, my freshman season. I had a big, I had like 14 staples in my head. It was like, I don't know, it was probably February, you know, it was a pain in the butt, but there he is. And I, I think I got knocked out for a second and I'm like standing there and he's looking right at me. I'm like, what is going on? Where'd you come from? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I knocked myself out for a second. And then I, and then I felt the blood and I seen him and I ran away cause I didn't want him to see what happened. <laughs> um, I just ran away, and then I don't think he found out till later. Uh, I, I mean, that's one of my funny stories I have with him. Right, right, right. 
Um, you know, what, what was that atmosphere like with, you know, rest, wrestling for him in that room? Cause you know, when he, when he took over that program, he, uh, you know, he came in like Hofstra, Hofstra had their fair share of success stories, you know, in like the years prior, you know, Marty Willigan was an NCAA finalist, lost to Dan Gable. You have Nick Gallo, NCAA champion to this day, the only NCAA champion in program history. And then Pete Capone was the last national finalist. But when Tom took over the program, they really weren't a very good team at all. And then, you know, he comes in, he, you know, wrestling for Iowa national finalists and whatnot. And then he starts bringing in guys like, Tom Noto, Roman Flazar, Eric Schmeezing and whatnot, and they get the ball rolling over there, you know, and I'm sure that it was like a very, because he's a very high energy guy himself. Was, so I'm sure that the practices were pretty high energy. What, what was that atmosphere like for you guys? Um, okay. So we had an unbelievable team. I um, mean, I, I know, you know, that uh, my junior year, we junior year, we finished, um seventh in the country is that what it was yep we just had some really tough kids i mean so the first day of practice we tom's like hey i want you guys to go on a run first two mile run down to jim's deli remember jim's deli Mm -hmm. down to jim's deli come back so okay when everybody started, it was an all out sprint. And it was like, everyone wanted to catch the guy in front of him. And it just, it was like that from the beginning. It was like, you know, you need to get going. And it was just competition, you know, competition was, at everything everything was a competition um i don't know if that's what you know helped us everybody helped us it didn't matter you it doesn't matter what you what you uh what we're doing there's there's some kind of competition to it don't know why it's just the way we were and um i don't know if tom you know fed that but, you know, he's a very competitive person, too. And he, he knows you get out what you put in. So there was a lot that he put in, which is the reason so much came out of Hofstra in a very short period of time. Yeah, I think he was only there for 10, 10 or so years. And he just did unbelievable. And then he went to um, Ohio and he's doing amazing there and that's because you know he puts in so much uh there's so much behind the wall behind the walls that you don't see um and and i'm sure everybody knows that you know it's but to be that person to to do that it it's it's different you know then you it takes a different person you know i can talk about it but to be the person that gets up and does it and you know, makes it happen, you know, that's Tom, you know, that's, that's just who he is. He makes it happen. Um, And you want to be next to him. You want to be, because he's going to bring you along. That's what he does. He brings people, he brings people along. He, he does that, you know, he, he's going to grab you and bring you along with him. You know, he wants you to get to the top and that's what he does. He's pushing you. He's pushing you to get to the top. That's what he, you know, that's one of the things that is, um, and it's always, you know, you, you walk up to him just from coming back from a class or something and you're standing there and he wants to come over and rush and tie you, and, you know, just grab you. And, you know, he just has to, you know, he just has to interact a little bit. So um, it, it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. And I know no one, everyone thinks that, you know, because it's the truth. You know, there's no one that's going to say anything different because it's it's not it's not the truth it's it's the best atmosphere you can have it's what he does it's why he's so successful he creates good atmosphere um i think that's what all the coaches do if you if you look at any program there that's what their their goal is to create a good atmosphere because that's what that's what you need as a wrestler to compete at that level you need you need a good atmosphere 
Um, and I think everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah. So you actually ended up wrestling right out the gate. No red shirt. You you start you started out the gate at 133 pounds. At what point did you know that you were you were going to be the guy o- over there? And you know, did you did you like fully embrace it right away? What, what was going through your head at that time? Uh yeah, no, I didn't know that I was going to be uh, at the number one spot. I didn't think so. Uh, there was a, a recruit that came in. He was pretty good. Um, and then he just he just flaked off. But, uh, you know, I didn't know what Ricky LaForge was going to do. I didn't know if he was going to go 41 or 33. Um, and at the time, I was a 33-pounder. Um, I could have gone 41, but I was still small yet. And then, uh, you know, Ricky, Ricky decided he was going to stay at 41. Um, and it sort of gave me, gave me the 30, 133, uh, which wasn't easy to make. Um, but I made it and uh, I miss it. It was fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. I remember putting, we got our singlets uh, for our first competition. And we have, we all have our own little locker. And he, the coach said, hey, you know, tomorrow, you know, your, your singlets will be in there. But for some reason, I was in the locker room late that day. And I seen, I seen the, uh, the launder guy put all the, the suits and the singlets in, in our warm-ups in our lockers so I went in there and got it <laughs> and I put it on right away and uh, I was standing in front of the mirror and it was like I think you know I was a freshman and I was just like wow <laughs> that's when it like hit me I'm like wow I'm for one I am not in Pennsylvania I'm in New York mm-hmm. and I'm in college and I'm wrestling for this team and everybody on this team is like top notch. It was just, it was just hard for me to, to take that in, but it made me feel really good and it helped me. I think that's something that something that helped me get to that weight class that I needed. Uh, Cause 133 wasn't easy for me, but I knew, um, I knew we had a really good team if, and, and I had to be a part of it. So that was, that was the only spot I had. I had to take it. Right. So you, you know, you mentioned how 133 wasn't, wasn't an easy, uh, you know, wait for you to manage, even though, even though you got through it that year, you were a national qualifier and everything following year, you move up to 141 pounds, you know, and again, again, it's a, it's another, you know, maybe not exactly no, knowing Tom, it's not, it's not the, it wasn't the finish that he wanted, but it was a successful season for you guys, you know, a national qualifier for you again. I think I remember, seeing something from John Massa a couple years back, you guys didn't finish in the top 10 that year, but at a point in the tournament, you guys were in the top 10. Um, and he was kind of saying that people at that, at the national tournament that year, were looking at the name. We're just like Hofstra. Like, what is that? You know, what was, what was it like for, for you guys like competing that year and, you know, seeing, I guess knowing where the program had been and where you guys were taking it, you know, what was it like when, you know, just getting to that point? Uh, huh. It was, um, it was fun. It makes living now hard (laughs) because, uh, you know, I just, I just enjoyed it. I really did. And I miss it. Uh, you know, it, it, all the difficult things that you have to do, it's all worth it. Um, and I think that's how everybody on our team felt because that's what I saw. You know, everybody was putting 100% effort in. And um, we, you know, we, we had the same, we had the same goal, I guess, as Tom was to, to beat everybody. And, um, you know, we're all, we're all state champions on the team from bottom to top we were all state champions, you know, we were all, we all, we all had a taste of, of the top of the podium. 
So we were just driven. And, and, I, and we had people on the team, you know, Mike Pachevich. He's, he's one of the coaches there now. Mm -hmm. He's definitely one of the guys I looked up to and many people, I'm sure. Uh, I had to look up to him, you know, because I couldn't keep up with him, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, that's who, that's who you look up to. You look up to the people you can't keep up with. Uh, I remember, um, didn't matter what it was, didn't matter what it was he was going through. He had this same look on his face, you know, like he was going to get through it. Didn't matter. And I remember looking at him on the treadmill. We were, we did, a you know, one of these ridiculous treadmill workouts that the coaches put you through. And um, he's, he's on the treadmill breezing through this thing. And I remember the look on his face and uh, I started doing that. You know, he taught me that right away. You know, the, the look on your face means a lot, you know, it means a lot on how far you're going to go. And uh, so I would continue. I, I tried to keep that, you know, you know, look on my face, that poker look like you're not, you're not in pain. <laughs> you know, there's not something in the back of your head telling you to stop when there is, you know, he, he was really good at that. And that's something I learned on early on from him. So I was, I was very fortunate to have the people that I had around me. Um, not just Tom Ryan, Tom Ryan was an, was an amazing guy, amazing coach, but uh, he brought together this group of guys that were um, the perfect match for me. Uh, you know, Masa, he, unbelievable skill, slick. It's his movement. I learned. I learned a lot from him. Um, I learned a lot from Chris Weidman. He's big, big time gamer. You know, you put you put money on the line, and he's he's going and getting it. You know, I learned that. You know, you, you got sometimes you just gotta, you know, go for it. And he was he. That's one of the things um, I got from him. Um, so many people. Uh, Thomas Set. He was one of my favorites. You know. I was a freshman. He was a redshirt freshman. We lived together as as freshmen. Uh, Louis Rigorello, of course, of course, I love him. He was my workout partner for two years. You know, we were every day, every day sharpening the tools. Uh, he taught me a lot. He he's the one who made me have to hustle. Um, you know, if you didn't hustle when you when you were wrestling with Lou, you were getting put on your back. And it didn't matter who you were. And you can look at the stats. He puts everybody on it on their back. So, you know, he he forced that into me. You know, I had to hustle. I had I didn't have I didn't have a moment to to breathe. Um just a lot that I miss. Miss a lot from it. Uh and it was a, a great, a great experience. Yeah, for sure, for sure, Charlie. We definitely miss you out here in Long Island too. You you definitely put up some some great performances. If anybody remembers those crowds during during those days at Hofstra, they they used to get very crazy. I'm talking, you know, during during you know both both regimes during your time there, they was packing out crowds going up against you know Lehigh when they were ranked number one, bringing in Oklahoma State, Minnesota, Penn State, you name it. And you guys, you guys were always gamers, so you know just. From a fan perspective, anyway, I got to say thank you because you guys always, you know, put 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 on a show and it was always fun to watch. Yeah, we loved it, man. We really did. Everybody on our team, we just, we all loved it. You know, no one was there and um, didn't want to be. Everybody was there. And, you know, I think, I think maybe some of the injuries might have held us back. Uh a little more, you know, I think we would have done a little more. Um, but injuries, man, they they pay, play a big factor on um, how you're going to compete. Definitely, definitely. We've seen that with a lot of guys, too. You know, you mentioned I talked to you all, off uh, camera about a week ago, and you said you'd mentioned the, Just, the Justin interview. He's, he's somebody that's definitely, you know, unfortunately had to deal with that, that definitely set his career back a ton. Yeah, yep. <clears throat> But um, you know, 
So following that 06 season, Tom Ryan, you know, leaves to take the head coaching job at Ohio State, you know, and obviously you guys had a very good team. You know, you you were just fit. You had just had it come off a season where you finished right outside the top 10 couple All-Americans. You know, when, when did you find out that he was going to leaving that excuse me, that he that he was going to leave? And, um, you know, what what was going through your head at that time? I know you said you were devastated. Yes. <clears throat> so we found out. Um, I think it was sometime in the summer or uh, I, I don't remember exactly what time it was. It was after the season um, and yeah, it was, it was hard to, it was hard to swallow that. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know who was going to take over. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to leave. I didn't want to leave because of the relationships I had with the guys on the team. Um, plus, you know, I didn't think, I didn't know I can go. I didn't think I can go anywhere and have that level of competition in my room. Um, so I knew that I was, I knew I, 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 I um, had made the right choice. So I was going to stay at Hofstra, but I was just worried on who was going to come in. And Tom, uh, Tom Shiflett came in and I loved, I love Tom. I love Tom Shiflett. Uh, he was great. Uh, he, I felt good a lot with him. Um, something he would do I guess I don't know if he would take note or what but he was very good at pushing us when we needed to be pushed and re and letting loose when we needed to be let loose um, because you know especially me he came you know as as a 141 pounder when I'm at practice I probably, I probably take 200 shots on one knee, you know, after, after a while it, it wears you down, you know, and there were just some times, some things that he, I think, I think he did. He helped, helped, helped us um, to stay fresh. That's one of the things I started learning. And then of course I had Dubuque. Dubuque is, you know, a wrestling Phenon, he's just really good at what he does, and he's just, you want to do good. You want to do good for these guys because they, the way, the, what they give up, what they give you, you know, coaches give you so much. It's hard to not want to be successful for them, especially uh, guys like Joe Dubuque, Tom Ryan, Tom Shiflett, Rob Onsbach. You know, uh, I remember one time I asked Rob to get me gum and he, he went and got me gum. He went and bought me gum. I was, you know, getting ready to weigh in. And, uh, you know, cause he cares about me that much. And, uh, and he, he went and got me gum. And I remember thinking about that. I still think about that, you know, how he went out of his way to go get me some gum. Um, because you know how it is cutting weight, you know, yeah. You, sometimes you get a little cranky, whatever. And, but, uh, yeah, Shiflet, Shiflet was a great dude. I miss him. I miss Dubuque. Love Dubuque. Um, Ansbach, he was great. We had a great team. So, I mean, the, the look going into my junior year was, was good. I felt so good. And I think that's why we did well. I hope, I wish we would have done better as a team and me personally. Um, I was, I was pretty upset that I wasn't in the national finals. I think that was my goal was to get to the national finals and I lost I lost in the quarters that year. Yeah. Um, so I was upset that I wasn't in the finals. 
but but uh yeah it was going into that year was was great even though Tom left Tom Ryan left it was still it was still a really good atmosphere um so I'm thankful for that Right on, right on. I mean, it's definitely can't argue with that either. When, you know, Shiflett came in, Shiflett was, you know, a decorated wrestler in his own right. But, you know, Joe, De, specifically Joe Dubuque coming in, Joe Dubuque was coming off of a national, a national title when, when, when he came in over there. So I'm already sure that that's something that, that helps you guys out tremendously. But, you know, aside from that, you guys just were, bring, were bringing back a, a really good team. So, you know, you, you guys, you know, you, you, you win another conference title that year and you're coming in the lot, the lineups already good from top to bottom. Louis Ruggiero was a true freshman. He was a guy that's holding his own and whatnot, you know, and you guys go into the 07 tournament and put James Strauss, Chris, Chris Weidman, Mike Patrovich. Was there, was there another guy who was just, no, those, those three guys made the semis and then you also all American that year taking third. Yes. What What was it like? What was it like for for you guys? Because you know, even like going back and watching the broad the broadcast. Because Hofstra, Hofstra's really rolling at this point. I remember you know the ESPN guys saying like the pride of Long Island. I think it was after Chris Weidman had had made it to the semis. You know what? What What was you know going through your guys' head at that time? Um. At that time, I, I don't know. I, you know, you're you're right there at the end of your season, and you're you're trying to fight basically for your life, because uh, I I think that's how we thought of it. You know, like losing is is uh, is next to dying. You know, so so we're we're in competition mode. Um, although when I was, you know, sitting out. I uh, I couldn't help but watch, and um, you know I felt I felt happy for everybody, uh, and of course you know that's what you're gonna do. It's my teammate, you know. So yeah, I would say um, it's one of those satisfying things where you know, your almost your season's almost over and everything that you've been working for is, uh, no matter how you do it, 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 it's over and you accomplished it. You got through the season, um, but you know, you want to be on the top of the podium. And, um, it was good to see, it was good to see us get some guys on the podium and, um, get recognition and get, get seen for, you know, the effort that we put in throughout the whole year leading up to that, that tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if you see me uh, doing a little movement right here. I do got a, I do got another guest in with me right now, Charlie. Oh my. Can you hear me? Uncle Tone, what's up? Can you hear him? No. Oh, hold on. Let me fix that up. I hear you. I hear you. And then. How about now? Yes, sir. My friend, my man, Charlie Griffin. Charlie, how are you? Hey, Uncle Tone, how are you doing? I, I'm doing good. How are you? I, I'm doing great. Uh, this is an unprecedented situation. I've never, I've never, since my son Richie has been interviewing people and doing his podcast, I've never ever come on in the middle of a session and an interview to speak or, or engage with whatever guest that he had. And when he told me he was gonna have Charlie Griffin and he's had a lot of great people on his show, I just had to, I just had to get on for a few minutes. I wanna first and foremost, thank you for coming out of Reading, Pennsylvania after your high school career, after winning a high school national title and choosing to come to Hofstra because at that time, you know what Hofstra Wrestling was doing and, and the great things that took place and the memorable things that were done during your era before and, and around that time, which I don't, I, I don't wish that, but I don't know if that will ever, ever happen again at Hofstra University. I want to just thank you. Of course, man. It was, it was a pleasure. I, 
you know, I, I tell everybody I miss it. I miss every, every day I miss it. <laughs> I, I, I want to go back now, <laughs> although I, I love my life now and, and everybody that's um, a part, a part of my family. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I won't, I don't want to give that up, but I, I certainly miss being there and the experiences I had. I loved it. Yeah. Can't that, take that, it back. That, that's a great thing. Um, now what was your graduating year again, Charlie, your freshman year was what year was your freshman year? Oh, five. Okay. So 05, now oh, wait. Oh, it was last year, 08. Oh, 08, and was Tom on staff when Tom he graduated? For, no, Tom two years, and then was Thomas sat, two years, and then, and then um, Shiffler took yeah, over Tom the last Shiffler two. took over, right. Okay, Shiffler took over the last two. Yeah, I, I remember, I remember, like I said, you know, those are like great memories for you and for, especially for us as fans. I remember Richie being a young boy at that time. Um mm-hmm. And, and then his other younger brother and, and his sister, because I used to bring all three of my kids everywhere I went. And I remember us going to those great matches and uh, being there to support. But, I, you know, I, I had a, you know, I'm not as involved as I was when you were a young man wrestling. So you knew I was in there or I was up at Hostry all the time. And I was, it was commonplace for me to be over there. And um, I'll never forget, you know, you know, Coach Tom Ryan, who I love dearly like a brother, uh, Tom and me are talking and he's like, oh, I, I'm getting the kid. I'm getting that kid. I said, which kid? He goes, I'm getting that kid Griffin from Reading, Pennsylvania. I said, Tom, you're getting that kid. The high school natural. I said, I said, Tommy, that kid's good, man. And and once it took place and and, and once that reality, you know, happened, like I said, uh, just just the things that you guys did. There, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you. And and like I said, Charlie, I mean, obviously, you had many other schools across the country that were recruiting your talent your academic prowess, your athletic prowess to be part of their, their university. And um, what made you choose of all things? My question, what made you choose with all of that attention? What made you choose hospital? What made you say, I'm going there? Well, ultimately it comes down to Tom Ryan. Um, You know, he, he wants, he wanted me to come there bad. And I, I loved him. I loved him. I didn't know if Hofstra was right for me, but I loved Tom. And uh, he, like I was telling, uh, I told him earlier, uh, Tom called me up and he said, hey, you're coming here, right? And I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, good, because I, I, he's like, good, because I'm sending you the, the letter tomorrow to be there tomorrow. And I was like, okay. And then when I hung up, I'm like, look, if it's here tomorrow, I'll sign it and I'll go to Hofstra. Woke up the next day and it was there. Wow. It was at my house. What other what other schools at that time? What other schools were interested in you that were coming after Charles Griffin? Uh, Lock Haven, Clarion, mm-hmm. uh, Ryder, mm-hmm. West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, the list goes on. So they, what I'm saying is just just look at that. You know, you have multiple Division One schools. You know. Uh, 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 doing whatever it takes to try to convince you to go to their, to their university and, and wrestle and perform under their banner. And, and you, and you, like I said, you decide to come to Hofstra cause like everything else, cause Tom Ryan, uh, we know, we know personally, you know, as a wrestler, uh, uh, of his, and I know as a friend, like a brother to Tom Ryan, the greatness that he possesses, the passion, the inner, uncontrollable passion and drive that he has that makes people say, I love that guy. I want to be around that guy. I want to do whatever that guy says. I, I, I got to be part of that. Yep. And, and I'll never forget the day I knew he was leaving to go to Ohio state. I was, I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken because I knew instantaneously on that given day that it was never going to be the same. It was, I knew it was impossible because there's, they only make, they only made one time Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely missed, miss, I miss him now. Um, and I, I was sad to see him go. I was, um, I didn't know what I was going to do, but, um, I knew I had to stay at Hofstra. It was a perfect fit. The guys on the team, Louis Ruggirello, he decided to stay. And I was like, I'm definitely staying. <laughs> I, and at that time I already wrestled with him a couple of times. So, so I knew how he wrestled, you know, I had to stay with him. He was my partner. I knew he was going to get me better. Um, and yeah. he did. Um, I, I, 
I, uh, a lot of, a lot of my senior junior and senior year is Ruggiero, you know, and, and, and Dubuque, both of them getting me to that, you know, that peak performance. Um, so yeah, I had, I had a good time, I had a good time. And, uh, I was telling your son earlier about how, how I'll always remember you and, and how there were, you probably don't even know it, but my matches, my home, my home, I think I lost just one. I think I only lost one home. No, I lost two. I lost to Lee from Cornell. Cornell lost, Travis, yeah, two-time national champ. And I lost to uh, um, Michigan kid. Not Sarella. Sarella. No, Chirella. Chirella. Chirella, the younger one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the only two people I lost to at home. Mm -hmm. um, and I was telling your son how your voice was always one of those voices that mm -hmm. – uh, cause I knew like how you felt, uh, your energy, it made me want to do good. I wanted to do good for you. I wanted to hear your voice loud. I wanted to hear that. Um, uh, and that's, I was telling your son, uh, you don't know this, but Thank just you. your voice alone gave me a little bit of motivation in a lot of my matches, mostly my home matches. Uh, cause you, that's where you were. Um, so yeah, I was telling your son that earlier. And, th and that's that's funny that you say that because I had that told to me once before. And the other wrestler that said those exact words is you, but different, but pretty much the same was Mike Patrovich. And Mike Patrovich was wrestling in, a high, in, in senior nationals. I think it's in uh, Delaware or Cleveland, Ohio. I think it was in Delaware. You yeah, still got the video up on YouTube. Yes. And Mike's in the finals wrestling Joe Johnson out of Kansas who was a three or four time state champion and had already committed and was a full ride to Iowa. And from the minute I got there, especially coming into the quarters and then the semis, the hoopla and the noise behind the Joe Johnson kid. But I knew, I knew what we had in Mike Patrick. I, I knew that Mike, Mike was, Mike was about as close to almost Tom Ryan as could be like almost a carbon copy of him. It was, it's, it's pretty scary that he's not his actual son. And Mike said the same thing. And I'm screaming during his match. He wins. He beats, he be, be, he beats this kid from Cali in the semifinals who was extremely talented. He beat him seven, four, I think it was. And then he beats Joe Johnson in the finals to make a long one short. So this day, Mike goes, he goes, uncle Tony he goes, I'll never forget that final. He goes, my father was in the corner. There's thousands of people in the arena, and I can hear you clear as day. Yeah. So it, it, it's kind of funny that those stories uh, are, are pretty much, you know, parallel with each other. And then the one more thing before I get off, I want to say is talking about our good friend who I love dearly as well, because, you know, I was so close with you guys and around you guys. You guys are actually like extended family to me. Wherever I see you, when I see you, the energy, the love, the spirit, it's real close. And it's with Lou Rigorello. Did you, did you, Lou ever tell you the story I on told how, him already. Right, how I he told ended him up already. at Austria? Did Lou ever tell you how Tom convinced him to go there? He just, yeah, he just, he just said that. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Tom, he's, he, Lou was going to go somewhere else. Buffalo. Right? Was he? And, and and all of a sudden, Lou tells me, and you know Lou how you know Lou's such a sweet kid, you know he's a, a real humble, easygoing kid, and 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 now once he went to hospital, you come to Long Island, you know you 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 get this uh, self confidence. I'm not saying it's self confidence. You you once you're in New York and Long Island, it doesn't matter where you come from. You could be very an easygoing guy, but you're gonna grow to be a little bit more than just easygoing and a little bit more outspoken right yeah. oh, your self-confidence to express yourself and stuff like that and now as a young man we're talking about that he's smiling and he's talking because so i said i said you know the same thing you know i said uh how'd you end up at hostel because i knew you were highly uh recruited or i said i watched you walk run through senior nationals you, you pin walker phase on from uh cox virginia who happened to be bubba jenkins teammate in the finals you destroyed you demolished you dismantled everybody at senior nationals I said, how did it end up being Hostra? And he goes, you know, Uncle Tony, that's crazy. And he chuckles, you know, he puts that smile with the with that kind of looks in the air to the side and chuckles and shows his teeth. And he goes, I was going to go to Buffalo, like my son Richie said, which is right. He goes, 
But Tom calls me, Coach Ryan calls me and says, uh, I, we need to speak. I, I need to see you. Uh, I, I, I want to talk with you. You haven't signed anywhere. You're not coming. And he's like, no. He goes, and he's like, I'm pretty much know where I'm going. And Tom convinces him to come to Long Island on a visit. Well, I told him he followed him into a restaurant. Yeah, no, and no, 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 no. What happened was Tom invited him to a restaurant, to uh, like a diner. And Tom, so, and I go, Lou, what happened? He goes, I don't, I hope I'm not going to contradict Maybe it's a little different, but this is how I know to be. And he says, right. And, and he says that he's sitting there waiting for Tom. And you know, you know how, how Lou is real, you know, real, real shy kid. And he's sitting there and a minute, two minutes go by and Tom walks through the door of the diner. And he says, Tom's got two hefty bags in his hand. And he walks to him to the table and Lou looks at him bewildered and he empties out one bag. And he says there's like a snow coat or something else. And then when he emptied out the other bag, there was swim shorts, a towel. And Lou looks at him kind of like, and he goes, uh, what's that all about? He goes, because if you go to Buffalo, you're going to be wearing that stuff all year round. But if you come to Hostia, the beach is 20 minutes up the block, which yeah. was part of his pitch. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get off. I actually had a quote now that I go got ahead, both. Go ahead, sure. Now go that ahead. I got both of you here, I was I was talking to him about like the atmosphere and everything. He mentioned a couple of times mm-hmm. about you and over there. It's crazy too because I don't know, uh, Charlie. If you if you ever watched when when Hofstra dueled Ohio State in '09, you know um, Flo was actually covering it, and the entire time, you know, throughout the matches, you know, just like you were saying, and like Mike said, you can hear him, you know, throughout the matches cheering the guys on. You know, so for like both of you guys, what, you know, what was it like, you know, you from the fan perspective, you know, how, how you got animated with him and, you know, just you, Charlie, talk, you know, elaborating more on it. All right, Charlie. About, uh, about your That father. special feeling. No, no, just I, 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 the energy, the aura, uh, not being able to put that time back in, you know, you'd have to like go in a bottle to pull it out. Like, what was that emotional high like at that time like what was that experience as an athlete to be part of that if you could go back in time and and try to grasp and 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 gravitate to that what was that like it's uh it's just hard to uh it's hard to put into words um what wrestling does does for me uh but when when there's someone in the in the stands that's that sounds like like they're they're right there fighting with you yeah. fighting for you yes sir um, it, it's it, and that's what i heard that's what i hear you know and that, that's what i hear it in you in you um so it's like it gives me that it gives me that little that little bit that that's at the bottom of the jar that you gotta dig down and, and scrape to get. You know that that's what that's what that does. Um, that's what it did. Uh, so yeah, I I was I definitely gotta thank you for that because there could have been a lot of matches where I could have won by a point or lost by two points, three points, but because your voice, you know, was there and it gave me it, it gave me what I needed to get to that next gear. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I'm grateful for you for being there for sure. And, and, and you know what, and thank you very much uh, that I'm honored to hear those words from such a great young man. One of the greatest Hofstra wrestlers to ever uh, wear a singlet. And like, then my son asked me, so dad, like asked you and me, you know, and then what, what did it mean to me? What was the feeling and what was I getting from that time? I, I've always been, I would proclaim myself like a visionary. And I knew during those moments and them times, I knew right then and there, as this was taking place, I didn't have to wait till after the fact or a year or 10 years. I knew during that given second that I was experiencing and living something super duper special that would probably never, ever, ever take place again. And what made me so animated is I knew that. I knew it. And I wasn't going to let it go. And I was going to live it. And I was going to maximize the energy, the passion, the love, because I knew one day it was going to be gone and it was never going to be back. So that was part of what geared me so high, which I'm always naturally geared high. But those were those were the things that would go through my head and through my spirit when that was going on. And like I like I tell Rich, uh, 
and 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 it kind of it hurts a lot that um if these kids you know it's almost like you guys were the Yankees that like like the Yankees a great professional you know franchise in Long Island that didn't have a 30 year a 50 year run where the Yankees are the Yankees and they're you know it's a memorable franchise you know since 1920 something 30 something you know 90 years later they have that and and Hofstra, it's sad to say, I don't know. I pray that one day they will because I'm I'm a Hofstra guy for forever, but I don't know if they'll ever, ever regain and do the things that were done during those years. And that's why my energy and and my my explosiveness and, and my expression of, uh, of energy was where it was because I knew I was experiencing special. Like, who would have ever thought? I remember when Tom got there, man, and he's scratching and clawing. He's got all these things going on, and and then he goes to practice. And God bless him. After he'd get out of practice, he'd have me. God bless him. Teague with him, and Teague was a baby. And, and Tom, hardworking guy, would run from the hostel practice with Teague, and then go to Hard Park High School and run night practices at Hard Park High School a couple of days a week. Yep. And and I knew I knew what I knew what was going on. I, I knew that. I had to absorb every second because I was like, you're never going to see this again. Yeah. I mean, look what we had here in Long Island, Charlie. We, you know, we, we, we weren't. We had an amazing so, team. Amazing yeah. team. Yeah. But, but what, look what made the amazing team. The perfect, it's like the perfect storm, you know, the right guys, the buy into the buy into the philosophy, the, the, the exercising, the philosophy, as a family, as a team, as a unit, and then to have one of the till this day, I, I tell you, um, there's a lot. He he hasn't won a team national title, but Tom Ryan, yeah, this year, twenty fifteen. Oh no, one time. I uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're right. One day he did, did, did. I apologize, I missed that. I'm not as in tune with Rich. Rich, he's really into his stuff. I I, I started a business thirteen years ago, so I'm not as as uh, sharp as I once was with my memory of of statistics. So please forgive me for that mistake, but um. Tom Ryan is just, I'll tell you, he's, uh, it, it's just like, like he was like the Billy Martin of wrestling. Like he, man, when he, when he, when he closed the door, I remember how fortunate I was. Here I am just a regular guy and he embraced me as a fan and as a friend and I'd be able to go and watch practice. I'm like, it's like being able to watch the Yankees work out as a fan and be in a dugout because Tom would allow me to just be there. And it was, it was insane. And, and like, you, what, you know, we're talking about is, again, Charlie, you know, coming from Reading, Pennsylvania and giving us your all for those four years, you will always be, you will always be a Long Island legend, a Long Island legend with John Massa, Mike Patrovich, Stretzwitz, uh, the guys, you know, Weidman after the, you know, down the road, uh, uh, Eric Schmeezing and all, you know, Roman Flazar and all of those guys. I mean, what, what? a blessing to have been part of that era. So with that said, I, I got to get going to the I one, one more question. One more question. What is it, Rich? Because I was just talking to him about the 07, the 07 season when they finished in the top 10. Yes. And I had mentioned. You what, know, as 0, a dual meet team? No, in the tournament. Okay, in the tournament. Okay. Okay. The 06 okay. season. Is that the year they finished fifth or seventh? Seventh. Seventh, yeah. So the 06 season, they actually, at, at some point in the tournament, in, in the tournament, uh, probably day two, they were in the top 10. I remember John Moss had kind of posted something about this years ago. People didn't even know what Hofstra was, just seeing mm -hmm. the name there. And then the next year, four All Americans, three semifinalists. You know, for you and Charlie, you could you could chime in again too. But for, for you, you know, as a fan, you know, seeing the beginning of when Tom got there, and they weren't they had nothing. No, and you know, I think he had what one and a half scholarship. For yeah, that one. he had nothing. <laughs> So what was the rest of the question? But, you know, what what was it like to see, even though, you know, it was Tom, Tom Ryan was gone, but Tom Schifflin and Joe Dubuque are there now, like what it was like to see them finally, you know, the goal is to win a national title, but to see them get like some a semblance of like the promised land there of, you know, they're in the top 10. Yeah. Well, well, you know, the, the thing is, is, you know how they say people are different, but sometimes you could be different, but the same. They were so different, but the same. Like Schifflin wasn't as intense as Tom in his ways. But he was intense in a calm, quiet way. He was as confident and as supportive and as a fighter in your corner that you get asked for, but in a different way. So I think the transition from Tom to Tom was easier 
and 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 they could gravitate to that transition because I think these young men, being as uh, talented and experienced in the sport, knew and could see that. Like, okay, Tom is gone, but this guy here is the real deal too, and, and and it's pretty much the same thing. And I think that transition, instead of like hitting a wall and and stopping and slowing down and saying, "Oh, now we gotta." restart our gears as a team as individual wrestlers because this guy's different or i don't like the way i don't think that ever really happened i think it was just you know yes there was tom's gone and and that was special but i think tom shiflett and then with joe dubuque there too did such a great job of carrying the torch that you know obviously you know after he left it, it started changing a little bit but i i i tell you man um yeah and i think we got i think and the keystone in all of that, yeah. I think, is Ansbach. Yes, Rob. So Ansbach was a part of the program as an athlete. Um, Great young he, man, by the way. Then he was, uh, you know, then he coached under Tom, Tom Ryan. Yes, he did. Um, and then he moves in, you know, with Shiflet and Dubuque. And they all, they got along great. And, uh, you know, Ansbach, you you know, this is, this is, you know, reality. And reality is you get in, you get what you put in. And Ansbach, he put a lot in. Yes, he did. Put a lot in. A lot. Um, So, he and that's why he ended up becoming the head coach because he can do it uh you know and people didn't think that he could you know because he didn't he wasn't as accomplished as maybe some other guys but some of the most yeah. accomplished athletes don't make the best coaches i and mean Bob, ansbach ansbach i don't know i don't know if anybody knows this i don't know how many people know this but ansbach used to he used to smack me in the face before my matches. That's what got me going. That was that was the little thing that he would do for me. He'd give me a smack on the on the face. Um, it's just one of the little things that someone close to to you would know. You know, it's one of the things he did and I didn't I didn't I didn't even really have to tell him. You know, he just did it. And he would do it before all my matches. Um, so, you know, a little smack on the face might sound like harsh, but, you know, the, there's a lot of meaning behind that. You know, I, I know you guys understand that. You know, sure. he's not just tap, he's not smacking me on the face for no reason. You know, he's, he's like warming me up. He's getting me going. He's, he's, he, the same thing you do with your voice and, and, and your, your, attention to what's going on in the match he's doing that you know he's he's giving me giving me love yeah. like hey let's go get it you know so um he was definitely uh a big factor in everything being a smooth transition from tom ryan <laughs> leaving and shiflet coming you know, he had to, he had to do a lot. Yeah. And to, he did a lot. To manage. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you know, the crazy thing is, you know, I, I, I recall like what, you know, like, like I said, it was a time that was taking place that I knew I was going to catch in a bottle and I was never going to let it go. And I never will let it go. Cause it's like, it's saturated in my skin and in my soul. And then I remember Shiflet, you know, and I remember Dubuque. And then, and then we're getting Joe Dubuque's coming to Hostra as an assistant. No way. And then Joe coming. It was awesome. It was insane. I was like, no way. And, and the first time to get to meet the two-time national champ, you know, the high school, uh, Jersey high school, one time or two-time state champ, senior national champion, and probably what's regarded as the toughest, the toughest senior national weight class in, in high school history, one of, regarded maybe as, because we know we had Ricky LaForge, who was the state champ that year at 26, comes down to senior nationals. Then you could get away and do that. Wrestle 20. He's in the bracket. Dubuque. Bunch. Travis Lee. Palomino. Tom Klum. I mean, yeah. it was it was insane. 
It was insane. It was insane watching the semifinals against the Michigan Strangler. And he's trying to rip Joe Dubuque's head off. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe just he found a way. Yeah, he's- we're we were definitely blessed to have him come. Um, especially especially me. Um, I know everybody else feels the same way. Mm-hmm. He just he just brought he just brought it, you know. And he actually has I don't know if he still has, but he had a club called the X Factor. Yes. And that's what Joe is, you know. Dubuque is the X Factor. Uh, I, we, we were we used to do this run around the part of the um, campus. Yep. And uh, I could never I could never beat Louie. Um, but Dubuque was there, and I just had to. And I just halfway through the run, it clicked that Dubuque was going to be at the end waiting for me, you know, to finish. And I just started sprinting. You know, I didn't want to, I knew who he was and I didn't want to, I had to like perform up to the, up to his standard. So I I started sprinting. And next thing you know, I see Louie, Louie's like 30, 30 yards in front of me, catch up to him. And he's shocked, like, Wow, where'd he come from? Usually lose by himself. He, he's an animal. I don't know how he does it. He just gone. But um, so I catch up to him and he's sprinting next to me. And I'm like, and I could see Dubuque and Ansbach. I'm like, I'm not stopping. And I just kept sprinting. And then right to the very end, uh right to the very end, I, I got in front of Lou and I beat him. I think I beat him one time. And uh that's I give I give credit to Dubuque because Dubuque was there and I, I knew he was going to be at the at, at the, the finish line. That, and, and, and that's crazy speaking about Joe because once I got to know Joe and to this day we're very good friends. Um, I had a very special experience with Joe um, in March of 2020 when my youngster, my youngest guy Tony, Richie's brother, uh, is wrestling at the uh, NCO Red Shirt Nationals. And he's putting together a beautiful run. And in the semifinals, my little guy beats a kid from Princeton named Jake Marsh, who's Dubuque's guy. All right. So the kid was a two man behind Quincy Monday. He was 65 pounds, drops down to 57. And I'm not thinking anything of it. And Tony beats the kid Marsh from Princeton, Dubuque's guy. Now that, you know, and A is his guy. Tony beats him in the semis, 7-4. Some of the kid was tough as nails. Good match. Tony beats him. And I'm walking around and my phone rings. I look, and it's Joe Dubuque. And he goes, hey, Uncle Tony, what's going on? I'm like, coach, what's going on, Jake? And he, and, and he had just watched the match. He goes, I just seen, I just watched your little guy, man. He goes, man, he's tough. He goes, Tony, he goes, Uncle Tony, he goes, I remember him being a little kid with his brother, Richie, at the, at the matches. And now I'm witnessing him do his thing. And, you know, and then he congratulated him, me through him and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, that, that again, getting back, like, again, to errors and stuff like that. Um, like I tell my kids, Richie knows that um, there'll never be another error like that. I used to bring them him by their hand he's got a twin sister and i carried my kids everywhere i went all the time and taking them to the matches it was like going again it was like going to to see the yankees it was like going to see the met the going to see the the the, the year the the 94 when the rangers won the cup it was that type of atmosphere yeah we were we were lucky we were very very fortunate as athletes too that we were all we all came together and we all kind of had that same killer instinct and competitive edge. So, yeah, we were all lucky to, to, like I was, I was the, the story I said earlier about how we started out our run, the first run as a group. And um, it was a sprint and I could see it in everybody, you know, who, whoever was in front of you, you're trying to catch them. Yeah, that's great. You know, every single person, you know, from Strauss to uh, Mike. Yeah, James you know, Strauss, yeah, that's right. Everybody. And it was just, you know, it's just that that's how the atmosphere, that's how everything was. Everything was about competition, um, friendly competition. Yeah. Sure. We, we loved each other, 
people and we wanted to see each other do good, but we couldn't help but be competitive about everything. So now on that team, Massa was on your team. Massa was on that first team. First two years. His first two years. Massa and Strauss were there, right? Yeah. What, a, yeah. That, what an incredible win. And, and you know what makes it so incredible? Um, Charlie, I know you were senior national champ coming out of Red, uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, how many state titles? Did you win state titles in yeah, PA? Sure. One, right? He won one state one title. Runner-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you you won one time. and you were runner-up once? Yeah, I lost to Coleman Scott my senior year. Wow. Oh, that guy's pretty good. I think he's over at UNC. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I never knew that. I never knew you lost to Coleman in the state finals. But, um, yeah, getting back to that group of guys, um, yeah, very special. You guys are very lucky. And and I'll always cherish and have those memories as a fan. And I can live them clearly, you know, day in and day out. Uh, like what, a, like you said, what a, what a great special time and moment. You know, like you said, think about it. You're a one-time state champion. I think Strauss might have won one state title. You know, there weren't there were no knock it out the park three and four times state champs on those teams. I think Ruggiero won it what two or three times. Three times. Louis three Rott times. won three times. Yeah, well, we, had, we had Thomas Set. He was a state champ. He was a one timer. He was. Then it was he Louis was a final because I think was it was it didn't Thomas Set lose to Thomas Obi Set Blanc? And he got a to Obi Blanc in senior nationals. Winning. He was winning. He was winning, and then he got and then he got a the result was he lost yeah. to Obi Blanc. But yeah. I'm thinking, and Thomas Set was a stud. Um, yeah. So so we had Thomas Set. He was a high school national finalist yes and yeah. it was uh then it was louis he was a finalist yeah i was a finalist. Oh, we won it you won it yeah so thomas that took second lou wins it you win it in different yep. years though you didn't win it the same year lou won it no no, no. no he's older yeah i know that that's what i'm saying but still but that's the reality now yeah. who was that who was that 49 the year mitch smith mitch smith the kid from virginia yeah yeah, the kid yeah. and masa was there my the first two years he he was in high then he went yeah, he, he was senior national he champ. Was, yeah, the thing with John, yes, he was senior national champ. He'd be Frankie, he'd be Frankie Edgar in the finals. He'd be Frankie Edgar in the finals. What happened? That's the four, The first four weight classes were all high school national finalists. Yeah. Yeah, you and know, I never thought of that. Huh? I never thought of that. Now that you're mentioning it, that's a fact. James Strauss is no pushover oh, either. Man. It was Mike. Mike Mike was uh he was a high school national finalist. Yes, no, he won it. Yes, Mike won it. So truth of the matter, let's not say finalists. Uh we're talking about three or four national high school national champions and Thomas said taking second. Yeah. That yeah. that 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 was incredible. And then, and then and then LaForge was there for two years. He yes. was a finalist. Yes. Wow, that's right. That's right. LaForge losing to had, Georgia. I'm Duke. telling you, we had we had a room that was just packed with a lot of talent. In one in a millions. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you, you see that in some big time programs. Yep. Go ahead. Mean, one in a million. Pat, Mike Patrick's were one in a million. Massa, one in a million. Mm -hmm. um, we even had Pustiello for one year as a redshirt freshman before he went back to Ohio. Mike Pustiello. You might have had already graduated. Oh, no, yeah, he... Priscillo. Yeah, Priscillo. Yeah, Priscilla was there, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's there with us. It was incredible. It was incredible because I remember working the floor at Senior Nationals. The year Pusiello, Pusiello wins it, Mike wins it from Ohio. And he beats Jake Vaughn, who is now one of my very dear friends. Oh, I love Jake. And what a great young man. And he beats Vaughn in the finals by one. It might have been two, one, three, two. He beats Vaughn in the finals. And I know we're getting this kid. And to go back to how tough those rooms were and how good they were and how guys could make jumps, I'll never forget. I go to a practice. So now he wins senior nationals. And now the coming four or five months coming in is going to be his first practice as a division one Hofstra wrestler. He's not in high school no more. Now he just won a senior national title four months before. And I go to a practice and I always would go to the practice the first week, never later in the second week, the first week or two. As soon as I would call time, I'm like, yo, you guys are wrestling live now because, you know, the first practice be easy two or three days. And then the live sessions would come in. And then he'd be like, yeah, Uncle Tony, because, um, yeah, we're going to start going live tomorrow. All right. All right. And I'd get there. And I'll never forget, this is uh, to attribute and give credit to um, what a great era in a room, like you said, that Joe Rivelli is the starting 184 pounder, another Pennsylvania boy who I love dearly, who I don't know if he's still at uh, Sam. He was at Sam for many years. And yeah, give you, still there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And to give you an idea on how tough that room was. 
Now, mind you, if I'm not mistaken, Pusella wins a national title as a redshirt freshman. Was he a no? Red- no, or his or sophomore year? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was his junior. It was his junior year. Yeah, he beat Varner, okay. and then he lost in the finals to Jake Herbert the following year. Okay. okay. No, no, no. You're right. It was a sophomore, and then he lost in the finals his junior. His senior year, he didn't place because he mm-hmm. cut his hand. Right. Right. All right. So thanks for helping clear me out because I was a little off track there too. But why I bring this why why I bring this up is to to give credit to your error in that room. What you said, how guys pushed each other. I clearly remember him as a freshman coming in that room. And people don't realize how good Joe Rebelli is, just like people don't realize how good Rob Onspock was. You know, everybody, there's only eight All-Americans a year per weight. And if you take 100 years of wrestling, it's, that's 800 All-Americans in each weight class in a 100-year span of time, right? So everybody can't be one of the eight every year. I mean, like, if you think about what you did, you realize, I, I wonder if you realize, like, what a tremendous accomplishment that is in your life. Like I'm one of eight, not only this year, but I'm one of, if you take, you know, how far does wrestling go back? 19 to 30, when the hospital, whatever that number is, you're one of those guys that could hold that flag and say, yes, I'm an all American forever. And I remember going to a practice and I'm talking with Tom. I love to pick Tom's brain and he'd pick mine too. Cause he knew I knew my stuff and I'm watching Rovelli wrestle with Pusello and he's a, a true freshman and yes was he a true freshman that just came in the room yes but he was a high school national champ a future division one national champ um, two years removed out out of that first time I laid eyes on him as a freshman and Ravelli is like you, you you got to see how good Ravelli was in, in other words Pusiello he couldn't, he couldn't go with Ravelli. I mean, he wrestled and rolled around, but you see who, who the man was at that time. So, it, it, like yeah. you said, it goes to show you what those rooms were like. You had yeah, to. Well, Ravelli was level. also, Ravelli was also one of those gamers. Mm-hmm. Um, just like why he could, he could win. He's going to win. Um, he's going to stick it out. Uh, and so Weidman, yeah, uh, Ravelli, Ravelli was a Pennsylvania state champ. He knows yeah. how to wrestle. He was, yeah, he was really good. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's just, just, just like, just like, like I said, it's just like tapping into, tapping into um, waters that'll never exist again. And that's why I go back to that. Cause like I said, um, unless you lived it for the generation coming up now, that's 13, 15 and they, all they could hear and, and, and hear the stories, but to live it, to live it, experience it. And I got to do it at the highest level more than any other fan in Long Island, because Again, I was able to partake into watching practices and being around the guys. So it was a more intimate experience for me. And like I said, Charlie, uh, to see what you guys did. And again, uh, we thank you. I thank you for guys like you, uh, Ravelli, my good friend, Rob Onspock, you Pennsylvania guys that said, you know what? Because that had never really happened for us. Not in my time, maybe some years early in the 70s. In the 80s, it happened with Hofstra PA guys. I, I didn't keep track. I wasn't a fan then. But I know that during my my time uh, supporting Hofstra, and I still do to this day with Dennis Papadopoulos, Mike was the assistant there. And, but to be part of that, you know it. It's 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 forever. It, and it's it's always going to be special. Um, I got to get going. I want to thank you uh, for letting me engage with you. I, like I get this unprecedented that I've come on my sh- son's show while he has a guest. And it being you, I'm on it again that I got to engage in and converse and go back and forth with you. You know, it's a pleasure when I get to see you. It's not much anymore. But yeah. listen, continue. Are you back in Reading? I'm like uh, 20 minutes from Reading, yeah. Okay. So continued um, a good life. Are you married now, Charlie? Uh, no, I have a girlfriend now. Okay. Uh, I'm divorced. <laughs> okay. Okay. Children? divorced i have a girlfriend now we just had a baby oh but that's it good for you charlie what do you have a baby so, boy or girl we're kind of, it's a girl oh god bless you how old is she i have, I have three others okay I have, uh, I have an older girl she's 11 she's 12 she'll okay. be 13 in, in uh-huh. april then i have an older uh my oldest son he's 10 he's 11 he's 11 and then my <laughs> my oldest Love my youngest it. son he just turned nine today. Today's his birthday. birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy birthday to him. I'm Happy not with birthday. him today, but uh, my older three are with my my ex. 
um, and I'm here with my. So your your three children, your first three are from your first marriage. Yes. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, that's cool. Do any of your children wrestle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All three of them do. Really? Even my daughter, she's pretty yeah. good. Really, she, she's good. the best of the three. Uh, my youngest is pretty. Um, he's pretty driven, so she's that's not. Funny. She's not as good as him, but she could be. Yeah. She could be. If she had the same uh, mentality as him, I think she could. Yeah, yeah, she's that, that, that's a funny story because, you know, Joe Dubuque has a son and a daughter. He's got a son. I think his son's name is Chase. Yep. And he's got a daughter. And he says Chase is built like a string bean. And <laughs> he said his daughter's a hammer. He goes, Chase is tough. I'm saying, he goes, but man, my daughter's built more like me. <laughs> He goes, the yeah, stuff. but yeah, I, I follow them on uh, Facebook and Instagram and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you know, Charlie. You know what? We we were blessed. You being the athlete, how God bless you. You being the athlete that got to accomplish and literally actually experience the 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 thing, the great feelings and emotions that I, as a fan and a supporter, am speaking about. You know, God bless you, man, because it took you and the rest of that team to make me feel and experience what I experienced and was able to feel back in that time and to be so boisterous because of you guys. You guys were the battery. You guys were the charger to my spirit, to my energy. So I thank you because never again. I, I, I You know I want to be wrong, but I don't think ever again we'll see the greatness that we saw in Hostra back then. I, I don't know. Unless we get Tom Shifflin or Tom Ryan back. <laughs> or maybe someday down the road, Joe Dubuque comes back. And not that Dennis Papadados doesn't do a great job, because Dennis does so much. And he loves the program. And sometimes things don't come together. There's no fault to Dennis Papadados whatsoever, because Dennis, Dennis knows his stuff, and he loves his guys, and he works hard. Just sometimes, I, I don't know, things don't come together. But not because... Yeah, and, and, a, and a lot of those, uh, you know, those blue chip guys are going, they're going out. You know they're exploring. No, none of no, none of those Long Island guys are staying. You're right. On Long You're Island. Right. Yeah, um, that helped. You know, Piccinini. Yeah. Uh, Pappas. You know, we had kids like Pappas and Buziello and Del Vecchio. That's at Ryder and and a lot of our tough kids, man. Silverstein. You know, we had we had a run of kids that if they would have stood home, I think you know what, as their careers go on, and they're all doing very well. You know. Everybody, again, can't be an All-American. Everybody's not going to be. But all of those guys to this day that are still competing, like I said, Peter Pappas, who's one of my favorites from, you know, being a kid. Um, you know, yeah, you know, we didn't get, we didn't, we didn't have whatever, we didn't have that law of attraction that made them say, I'm staying here. To the contrary, they're like, we're out of here. And, and it hurts because I know if you would have took those same group of guys because they all wrestle like in club wrestling together. I'm almost sure that they would have naturally had that. I got your back. I'm in this war with you because they knew each other since they were young. And I think when they splintered and went to different schools, I, I, I don't know if they ever found that anywhere else. And maybe that's what maybe stops some kids from really getting to that next level. But yeah. yeah, you're right. We didn't get those guys that we needed to stay home. We didn't get those guys. If Tom was home, none of them would have got away. Yeah, Long Island is, uh, you know, I live in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is known for wrestling. Number one, but, number one state in the country. But Long Island, it, I don't know, maybe just because of the culture I was in when I was there, but it just seemed like everywhere I turned, there was wrestling in Long Island. Um, so it's just, it, it's a little puzzling that, uh, the program's not where it where it was at. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think a lot has to do. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Charlie. Go ahead. Island, just, I don't know how it is now. I'm sure it's still booming. I mean, Weidman has a club. Uh, Pachevich has a club. I know there's tons of wrestling there. So um, there's always good guys coming out of Long Island. It's yeah. just, you, you know what happened, Charlie? It's, 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 it's there, but it's more sp- Spread and and it's more spread across the board and, and and what happened was like with that Silverstein that group the Adam Buziello the the Peter Pappas um, the Differencenzos Matteo Christian Differencenzo and all of those kids that were part of Razor Ruja what yeah. about 
Well, Rujo was out of his father's club. Vol- yeah, from but, BHW. Yeah, from BHW. But the Razor program was a very special time and era in kid wrestling, club wrestling, because one guy, and I tell everybody till this day who don't know their stuff, one guy, in my opinion, and I lived it single-handedly, and he was a father, single-handedly elevated Long Island wrestling, kid wrestling, like no other body before. And that guy is John Buziello, Adam Buziello's father. For those out there who don't know it, that you think he's just Adam's father, John Buziello single-handedly, sing with the help and the support of others, but this man with all his energy like mine and passion and knowledge for the sport. And Adam's father was a state finalist and a tremendously talented high school wrestler himself. Let me tell you, because I wrestled in the same era and I got to watch him. He was my idol coming up. And that guy single handedly was me, but with experience, with the energy he got. Yeah, you got to come. We're building this program razor. And he got all of these guys to buy in the parents. He got Bill Pappas, who was going at one time with TJ Hill in his fifth or sixth grade years. He got all these guys from that he knew were tough at tournaments and, and he built the family. He helped do that. You know, there's other guys that are part of race. I give them all credit. Teddy Deepest, but all of those guys get credit. Mike Patrick, <laughs> Ryan, they all get credit, but no one person single-handedly impacted Long Island kid wrestling like John Buziello. Adam's father. And the minute that era went and left, you don't have one parent or one guy that's got the energy and the passion to say, let's get all these guys together. We're going to make this club. And I mean, it was at a point, Charlie, where John Buziello was such a guy who walked the walk, talked the talk, walked the walk, John. They had a Greyhound bus at one time that was lettered Razor. It was all white and it said Razor. What club wrestling team from anywhere had their own Greyhound bus? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Then you go to Water Shore and you go in the back pocket and you see a Greyhound bus. Pennsylvania, Jersey. They were getting intimidated. They were like, wait a minute. Are we second guessing? We're from Pennsylvania. We're the number one home run state in the country when it comes to wrestling. And you go to Water Shore and you got the Jersey contingency, the PA, the new. But there was a cockiness and a confidence and a no, we're good. For that that kid era, that when they would pull up in that bus and they'd come together, they they believed in themselves. Uh, little Nicky Munch, there were so many of them. And I'll tell you something. My uh, I tip my hat to John Buziello because again, that was another special era. Like you guys with Hofstra Wrestling, and I tell you, it was a, a feeling you will never get again. Nobody, I don't think anybody else will captivate and put together. And he's he's an absolute genius, by the way. John Buziello is a genius. He's a genius. He's a real estate genius. He's a genius of life. He just, he just gets it. And I don't think there'll ever be another guy that'll tap into uh, Long Island. I hope there is, there will be uh, like John Buziello. So that's what happened with that era. Once those guys went off and like you said, they didn't stay home. We, we lost an opportunity for a second round of greatness. And, and it would have, and I, and I believe very well that Dennis Papadatos being a, a student and a wrestler of Tom, uh, would have been able to uh, help navigate that resurgence again. But once all those guys left, like you said, the Long Island home run hitters, it never happened. But with that said, Charlie, uh, I love you dearly. I'm very proud of you. I'm happy for your your happiness in life with your your new daughter and, and your children. Continue uh, staying grounded and God bless you. And have a good night, Charlie. Thank you. appreciate you coming on. And uh, it's good seeing you again. Yep, I can't go into a bagel shop without thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're, we're going to see, you know how in life, life is small. We'll, we'll cross paths again. Once this pandemic, this this ugliness that's taking place uh, goes by, hopefully next year in the coming future, there'll be a kid tournament somewhere in Jersey or Pennsylvania. You're going to be whatever, 18, 16, 17, and you're going to be like obesity East, and you're going to be like, oh, and it's going to be, ah, that's your little guy. Oh, man. And I'm going to be telling your son how, how awesome you were and and you'll be telling them what a crazy fan I was. But with that said, Charlie, God bless you and stay focused in life. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Uncle Tony, man, never, never, never a dull moment with him. Love having him on. Charlie, I got I got a couple more questions, questions to ask you before we get out of here. Cause we were we were uh before we had before we brought him in, we were um, you know, recapping that 07 season. Then to this day, the 2007 Hofstra team is the 
best team that Hofstra has ever fielded, you know, for everything that you guys were able to accomplish. And we mentioned that you, you know, came away with a third place finish in that tournament. I actually talked to Justin, you know, when I was interviewing him, what I didn't know was you were thinking about red shirting going into the, your, your senior season. Um, well, I, I think there might've been some talk about it uh, because I didn't, I didn't red shirt yet. Uh, or I, I did red shirt my sophomore year, but I came out in December. I, Tom, Tom Ryan brought me out of red shirt. So, I mean, yeah, I think there was a little bit of talk um, but nothing, uh, I get them. There must've been more talk with Justin. Um, but I didn't see much of that talk, that conversation. Um, right. So, yeah, I did see him say that. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was good news. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm sorry about that for a second. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, you know, going in, going into that 08 season, obviously you gotta be, you're coming off the third play finish, gotta be highly ranked. You still, you still had some, some, some guys in there as well. You know, a youngster like Alton Lucas, may he rest in peace, you know, who's highly, another highly touted guy to come in there was coming back a Louis, Louis Ruggiero that season was actually, you know, he put together a string of wins that, that, you know, gave him a number one <laughs> ranking that season. You know, so for you coming in and for the team, what were the expectations? Um, well, I think the expectations were high. Uh, everybody on the team was an extreme competitor and thought that they could beat anybody. Definitely thought that um, – and I don't know how everybody else thought, but I thought that everybody was focused on becoming a national champ. And that's what I saw in everybody. Whether that happens or not, that's a different story. Um, but, you know, it's it was everybody's focus. Um, we all ate. We all ate good. And we did everything we could to maximize our ability to win. So um, it was, so we had a, We had an amazing group of guys and Alton, yes, he, he was one that just got mentioned, but should have been um, more, more, he could have done more. Uh, just, you know, people struggle with things that you don't see on the surface. Um, and him and I were really close. Uh, so it's, it's, it kind of hurt. It hurts knowing that he's not here anymore. Um, but I'm fortunate to have him as a teammate. He was unbelievable. There's so much I learned from him. I was a junior, he was a freshman. And, uh, you know, I think he was a two-time state champ. But, you know, just some of the things he was able to do was something that I would try to mimic. Um, you know, and it helped me out. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, so specifically with that season, man, you guys are riding high and everything. We mentioned, you know, Al Alton actually finishes an All-American that season with you. You know, and then Louie had the number one ranking at, at, at a point in time during that season. You know, you made it, a, you know, a run through that national tournament, you know, uh, headed, heading over to the to the semifinals where you actually faced Jay Jaggers in, in that semifinals. who was actually was wrestling for Tom Ryan at the time. I know Tom Ryan, I believe, actually, from what I heard, had like made a, a personal choice where he would never coach against, you know, his his guys at Hofstra that were with him. So I know he wasn't in the corner for that match. You know, coming into that match, you know, what what are, you know, your feelings and everything going into that? It's just like I got to get through this guy. Was there, you know, a little bad blood or anything like that, you know, with the with the relationships there? Um, no, there wasn't any bad bad blood and I think I wrestled him like maybe a month before that and we had a really close match. I won 
but um, I didn't, I didn't expect to lose. Um, even when I was losing, I thought that I was going to come back and win. <clears throat> but um, it did that. That didn't happen. Um, there wasn't there wasn't any bad blood or anything, but uh, you know it was just another match, and I uh, I you know made a couple mistakes, and he capitalized on it, and um, didn't have enough time to come back, and that's you know that's one of the things you got you got to work on is not getting far behind, so you don't have so far to catch up, uh, but. Yeah, I don't think there was anything um, against Ohio State or Jaggers or Tom. Um, it was all competition. And, yeah. You no. Know. Yeah. You, you know, specifically with that match, man, that that was an exciting match. You know, I've, I've watched it a, f- a few times now. You know, if, if even when I, I was in high school, that was a match I, I just enjoyed watching just because of how good of a match it was. You know, and he, 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 you know, he put, he put up some points on you early on, but you being the, you know, the guy that you are, you know, you kind of like are a prototypical Tom Ryan guy in the way you wrestle with your conditioning. And you're just, you know, you're on it. You know, you, you were mounting a comeback there late. I mean, you mentioned the time there. I'm only seeing what's shown on ESPN. I don't know if you ever noticed this or not, or if it was ever a conversation, you know, during or after the match, you were in on a shot, you know, at the end of the match and you finished it, but I, they said that the time had ran out. But from, from what I saw on the broadcast, it was about like two seconds left. Was that ever a conversation with the coaches and you? Um, no, it wasn't. And um, you know, I guess, I guess the call could have gone either way, but I had my arm still, in on a high crotch he was on his hip but I didn't have complete control um so I didn't I didn't fight I didn't contest it I didn't think I had it I thought it could have been a takedown he's on his hip um it could have been a takedown but like I said my arm was still in be- pinch between his legs so even though I had my body in position, it is a tough call. Um, but I just I didn't think it was gonna get overturned, mainly because I, I felt like my arm was still trapped, even though I got my body in position. So I just, you know, kind of took it. And didn't realize, didn't, I didn't, it's hard to, to, to um, realize when something like that happens and your, your adrenaline is going and I just shook hands and walked away. And as I'm walking away, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to be a national champ. That's all that I could, that's all that I could think of was that I wasn't going to become a national champ. Right. Um, you know, so you, you know, obviously that's a, that's a tough loss and everything, but you, you get, you get right back in, in the thick of things the next morning and into the third place match, you know, in the third place match, I guess maybe it's, you can call it poetic justice as, as you know, something to that nature. You end up going up against Nate Morgan of Oklahoma state, who was a guy that you had a bit of history with. He was at, he was the one who beat you in the quarters. The, the, uh, excuse me. No, yeah, he was. He was the guy that beat you in the quarters the year prior. Yeah. Um, you know, so what was it like for that match? This is your last college match ever, you know, against a guy well, who you've seen before? Well, yeah, I, I think I wrestled him five times and I won all, four times. So he beat me at nationals, which stopped my path of getting to the finals. Um, so you know, there, there's, there's a, a, a feeling towards that, um, you know, and I, I wrestled him for third and fourth that same the, year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, after he beat me in the, in the um, set, in the quarters, 
uh, I just, I just knew I couldn't lose to that kid again. I just couldn't do it um, because of what he sh stripped from me. You know, it's, it's hard when you're, when you're, when everything you have is geared towards one thing and you're so close and then someone pulls it out from underneath you. So yeah, I, 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 I liked wrestling with him. I wrestled him at the senior, the, uh, the all-star classic. Yeah. I put him the week after that, I wrestled him at a, um, the journeyman tournament, <clears throat> journeyman duels. Uh, so yeah, he was fun to wrestle, I would say. But um, you know, I just I could not lose to him after he took that opportunity from me. There was there was a little bit of a, a beef there, I would say. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Same thing with Gaggers, you know, there I don't hate I don't hate them. Yeah. But on a, on some level, I hate them. <laughs> it's hard to say it like that, but yes, you know, they, they took the thing away from me that I, that I wanted the most, you know? Um, so I, I I'd say there's, there's some level of, of hate there, but again, I, I also applaud them because they, they, they did, they did well. They did it. You know, I, I'm, that's how I guess comp competitors are, you know, you can be, you can be happy for someone who beats you because they, they, they wrestled their butt off, you know, but also you can be disappointed and hate that person too, because they took something away from you. Right. Right. So, you know, you walk away, you walk away a two-time All-American, not only walking away a two-time All-American, but, you know, back-to-back -back third place finishes the best you can do when, when getting knocked out the front side of the tournament, you know, um, what were the feelings like following your college career, you know, that day, like now that everything's over number one and then number two, like, you know, how do you feel about your, your careers as a whole today? Um. <clears throat> So after it was all done, said and done, I, there was just, there's just like this sigh of relief, you know, there's, although I didn't get to that pinnacle spot that I wanted to get to there, there's still, there's still some relief there um, because you're kind of done and you know what you put yourself through to be able to compete with the best guys in the country. And it's just, it's taxing. So mentally and physically. Um, so I, I was not necessarily ready to give it up, but I accepted it. Um, and then after I just started coaching, just coaching and wrestling around with, you know, high school kids and little elementary kids and, um, just giving back now, but uh, yeah, it's it's not easy to when I think about um, all that I put into it and I didn't get out what I wanted, but I think I still enjoy what happened, um, even though I lost and didn't become a national champ. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, it's just like your dad was saying, it's, you know, it's who knows when that's going to happen again. And I, it won't ever happen again for me, but it was, it was a great time. I, I enjoyed it and I'd do it over if I, if I could, even if I was, if they said, well, you're going to lose again, I'll do it. I'll still do it. I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Right, right, man. I know he want, he wanted me to bring up the the Razor thing again because you know the Razor Wrestling Club had had a lot of you know really really tough guys, you know from a, a La Mattia, Tommy Cox who wrestled at NC State, Anthony Sparaccio, wrestled for Binghamton is over there. But you know again just with that club, it's really a testament to you know a guy like Mike Patrovich who, who was a, a a big part of that as well, producing a lot of those nationally ranked guys, and that that all goes back to you know being a part of that Hofstra room and, you know, being a part of 
Tom Ryan and, and Tom Shiflett and, you know, being able to, to be the coaches that they are. Are you, 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 are you actually doing some, some coaching yourself? I think I saw a video, you know, some years back where you, you were uh, running a tournament. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I didn't run any tournaments or anything, um, but yeah, I'm coaching the local. Choice of words by me. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm coaching uh, lo- locally. Uh, this is the first year. It would be, I think I was coaching for 10 years now. Yeah. Coaching for 10 years now um high school and um this is the first year that i'm not doing it um for some personal reasons and because of this uh of the virus you know it's kind of got it has everything at a standstill um so but i'm going to be getting back into it of course my kids are doing it and uh you know and you you just can't, I can't get away from it. Completely. Right. But for right now, I'm taking a little bit of a, of a break from it. Right. With Charlie, man, we hope, we hope to see you back, back soon with the, with the coaching thing. Cause obviously, you know, me personally, I feel like the world's a better place when Charles Griffin's in, involved in wrestling. And, uh, you know, just from a, a fan standpoint, man, I want to thank you again for, for a lot of fun times to, to be a part of watching you wrestle and, you know, being a part of those teams and everything. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate what you're doing here. Uh, sort of giving, giving me some light again. Uh, and that's one of the things that you kind of try to hang on to as you get older. You know, the, the, the people that are going to, you know, bring that light back on you. So I appreciate you doing that. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just amazing. I, I, I'm, I, enjoy, I, mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, your dad came on. Yeah. I love I love seeing him again. Uh, and I was saying earlier about how I can't go into a bagel shop without thinking about him <laughs> because uh, there's like two or three times I was in a bagel shop and there he is out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, he is. And he's so animated. And um, so it's always something that triggers Yeah, one of those triggers every time I go into a bagel shop uh, and I always think about him. So I'm glad I'm fortunate for that. And I'm fortunate for you for having having me on this show or uh, recording, interview, whatever you want to call it. Um, I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, anytime, you know, anything you need, just let me know. Um, yeah, so, again, thank you. No, thank you, man. Really appreciate this. It's Rich. It's two-time All-American for the Hofstra Pride, Charles Griffin. And we will catch you guys next time. See you soon.